welcome to another episode of A Spoonful of Species, your go-to place for conservation through baking. My name is Caitlin, and I'm an interpretive naturalist with years of experience telling the stories of animals, both aquatic and terrestrial. I'm also an avid baker, so each week I bake an animal-themed dessert and then tell the conservation stories for that animal and hopefully help you learn a few fun facts along the way. This week I made Lady Beetle Rose Tarts. They were super fun to make, very easy, anyone can do it, and I'm excited to show you how today. To make your vanilla tart, you will need one and one half cups of flour, one half cup of powdered sugar, three fourths teaspoon of salt, 10 tablespoons of unsalted butter, one egg yolk, one teaspoon of vanilla, and two to three tablespoons of cold water. First, to make your tart, whisk together your flour, sugar, and salt in a mixing bowl. With your mixer on slow, slowly add the butter one tablespoon at a time until pea-sized chunks form. Add your egg yolk and vanilla and mix until they are thoroughly combined. Next, add your water one tablespoon at a time until the dough is soft, smooth, and easy to work with. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and chill the dough for 30 minutes. Once chilled, bake uh, in tart tins for 20 to 30 minutes or until they are golden brown. Ladybugs, or lady beetles as they're actually more aptly named, are not bugs at all. So bugs are animals that have needle-like mouth parts. They are insects just like beetles, except beetles have a crushing mouth parts or chewing mouth parts instead. So because they're missing that proboscis or that needle-like mouth part, they instead are beetles. So I will call them lady beetles, but you can call them ladybugs if you like. Lady beetles, just like all beetles, have a hardened shell-like bodies and the lady beetles that you and I think about are usually red with black spots. But in reality, there are thousands of species of lady beetles and they can be many different colors from red, orange, yellow, uh, black, pretty much any color you can think of, there's probably a lady beetle that is that color. A group of lady beetles is called a loveliness and they do sometimes form these big colony looking um, sets of lady beetles. They're kind of they group together all in one spot, either to feed or to mate. And a lot of people think that you can tell the age of a lady beetle based on the number of spots, which actually isn't true, but you can tell different species based on the number of spots sometimes, which is really interesting. Lady beetles do not have lungs like you or I do, uh, but instead breathe through holes in their abdomen called spiracles. Interestingly, other animals have spiracles too, like stingrays. To make your tart filling, you will need three apples thinly sliced, one fourth cup of sugar, one tablespoon of flour, three tablespoons of unsalted butter, a half a cup of water, a pinch of salt, and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. To make your filling, thinly slice your apples into half moon shapes. Separately, combine your flour, butter, sugar, water, and cinnamon in a pan and simmer until the butter is fully melted and sugar becomes smooth. Add a little more water if the mixture is too thick then add your apples a few at a time, thoroughly coating them to warm the mixture on low heat and then let simmer for five to 10 minutes or until the apples can be bent without breaking. When the baked tart is cool, add your apples with the peel side facing up in rolled circles in the center of the tart. Bake at 375 degrees for approximately 15 to 20 minutes or until your apple tart looks finished and the apples are nice and soft to the taste. Mm -hmm. 
to make your ladybug decorations, you will need red M&Ms and dark chocolate melting chocolates. First, melt your dark chocolate melting chocolates in a microwave for 30 seconds at a time. Add to a piping bag with the smallest pointed tip that you can find. Then pipe on the spots, the wings, the head, and the antennas, and let set. Once dry, and once your tarts have completely cooled, you can put a small dollop of the chocolate on the bottom side of your ladybugs and place those on top of your flowers any way that you like. A lot of people mistake lady beetles as pests and they don't love them and they want to get rid of them. But of the thousands of species, 99% of them are actually really good for your garden at home. And they're really good for the planet as well. So lady beetles are great pollinators. Now bees and butterflies, they obviously get all the glory when it comes to pollination. And while lady beetles do not pollinate as much as bees or butterflies, they are excellent pollinators because they one sometimes feed on nectar as a little bit of supplement to their diet and two uh, they walk all over plants all the time and so if you want a nice fertile garden lady beetles are a great way to go they also are mistaken as plant eaters but they don't eat plants um, instead they eat aphids and other mites that are bad for your plants so um, I think people have that common misconception because they see the lady beetles and then they see the holes in their plants and they think, curse those lady beetles. But in reality, the lady beetles are eating the aphids and the mites that are destroying your beautiful plants. So if you want those roses, you want your plants to look nice and beautiful, you should definitely consider not only keeping the lady beetles, but maybe even introducing some uh, from around your neighborhood. So that they have a nice place to live and eat all those aphids and mites that you don't like and your garden can stay nice and healthy. Like I said, lady beetles have thousands of species, but of those thousands of species, there are quite a few that are endangered. And there's also some that have been introduced to their non-native habitats and are becoming a problem. So their biggest issue though, the biggest threats that they face uh, as far as conservation goes is pesticide use and loss of habitats. So one, loss of habitat. We are building homes for humans and places for us to live and work and drive, but all of that takes away from where lady beetles, beetles can live. And two, uh, pesticide use. So I know we all want beautiful gardens, we want beautiful homes, um, but pesticide and insecticides, they do more damage than good. So one, if you wanna get rid of the pests uh, in your garden, introduce the ladybugs and two um, if you want to keep the positive animals the positive insects like those ladybugs the bees the butterflies those pollinators and those insect eaters those pest eaters then using an insecticide is actually doing more harm than it could ever possibly do good so if you want to help lady beetles in their native habitat all over the world wherever you are don't use pesticides don't use insecticides uh, but instead, keep an eye out for lady beetles. They have multiple different um, types of their life. So they have a different life stages. They have ones where they look like weird little alligators. They have pupa stages, larva stages, they have eggs. And if you recognize your local species, then you know which ones are beneficial and how to protect those in their native habitat. You can also download the iNaturalist app, which is awesome because scientists use the iNaturalist information. So it's citizen science where you take pictures of say an aphid or you take a picture of a lady beetle in its larval form and you upload it to that app or to the website iNaturalist.com and it is a way for scientists to be able to track where these lady beetles are, how well they're doing in their natural environment, if their uh, food sources are abundant, but it also helps you because you can figure out what species you have and how to care for them or if they're maybe a species that you don't want around. 
So, if you like this episode as much as I like making it, come back and see me next week. Like and subscribe so we can take yet another bite out of conservation. <laughs>